In today's video, I joined Rathnir. It's an extremely popular county world building server with hundreds of people on it at all times, and genuinely one of the most interesting experiences I've had on a Minecraft server. In just this video, I joined a communist state, enter its political structure, fight in wars, commit international diplomacy, and watch empires rise and fall. If you'd like to join the server, the IP is on screen right now, or you can copy paste it down in the description. Remember to like the video, subscribe for more content, and hit the bell button to receive notifications for my future videos. Also, only 1% of you currently watching are subscribed to my channel. My story on Rathnir started like many others. Not in forest or towns, but instead an hour long queue. There's a queue skip you can buy and I would highly recommend this if you're able, especially during the peak hours. But before long, I found myself at the Rathnir spawn, and after another 20 or 30 minutes of watching tutorials, reading rules, and trying to understand a little bit about the lore, I teleported somewhere in the wild. I would eventually figure out that I was within the fallen kingdom of Asian Fjord, the last remnants of an empire that once dominated the entire southwestern world. All that was left was ruined towns, a massive fleet of ships with no one to man them, and the capital city. Previously one of the most populated cities in the server, it's now home to just a few caretakers. I decided to hide out in the dark oak forest in the northern part of their land, building inside one of the trees wary of other players. Intruding on a nation's land without permission is considered squatting, and many players don't exactly take kindly to people who do this. But I wasn't quite willing to join a town yet, so I made myself comfortable with a secret entrance into a one-room hut and a staircase down to Y11. Now all I needed was money and materials. You can sell iron and gold for quite a bit of money, so I grabbed my iron pick and some torches and headed down into the abyss. Once I was near Bedrock, I realized I was not the first person to be down here. Endless mining tunnels stretched all under the map, the result of thousands of players in a world that desperately needs materials for building cities, fighting wars, and making money. But there's still plenty left to mine, and so I set the C418 music to 100 and got to mining. Around an hour or so of my life later, I made my way back up to the treehouse and smelted what I got. 11 gold, 18 diamonds, and enough iron to make proper equipment, with some to spare that I could sell. Heading back down, I sold the gold and iron for 6,000, uh, Rathnir dollars, I guess? I don't know what the server uses as currency. After I got my basics taken care of, I decided to explore around, though I did have to install Zero's world map because the server's render distance was capped at 8 chunks, so I'd also be mapping out a good chunk of the region I was in. On my journey, I came across many towns, some active and others not so much. Traveling by the coastline, I first found Kumar, a city half in the ocean, then came across New Velotra, Vars, and Filan Kif, part of a nation that's not important for this video. Going down a river, I found New Interdam, the first major city since Asian Fjord. Deep in the desert, it had amazing architecture, with water canals for boats and a giant pyramid. I may have gotten my boat stuck there and was forced to swim out of the canals, but once I got my boat back, I kept heading further north. The desert became savanna, and then it became forest. I followed the coastline around Ascalon and into the increasingly cold taigas, eventually coming across frozen Voskovi a mighty looking for it that I would have explored if not for the giant walls keeping everything out, which I guess makes sense. Cutting through the tundra, I made my way to the other side of the coast and began to head back. Walking through an abandoned fort, I looted some building material. I'm sure whoever was here won't mind me taking a few stairs. I then came across a one block wide bridge and decided to walk on it, as why not? This is probably not a good idea in hindsight. I came across a small cobblestone fortification, but there were other players in it. One of them in full enchanted diamond armor began making his way up the platform I was on with a diamond sword out. And assuming the worst, I began running for my life. 
With just iron armor, I had no chance in a fight against him. He tried getting me to stop a few times in chat, but it wasn't until I'd run past the great Sopolis mine and into some farms that I was forced to stop. I was pretty sure I was about to get turned into sliced bread. The stranger simply asked me what I was doing. I told him that I was new, and after a bit more small talk, he told me that he was heading to commit a coup d'etat and walked off back towards Posopolis. I do not know what came of that attempt, but regardless, I was alive and beelined at home. I have no idea if I would be as lucky next time. My squatter hut was nice and all, but would eventually be found, and I needed to start a town or join one. I came across a nifty little house just outside of a village, not far from the capital. Setting up a small claim, I was able to get a ton of food with the abandoned farm and continue to mine. But what I was doing was still illegal. So I got on Discord, messaged the ruler of Asian Fjord if I could build on his land, and... Oh. Well, before my small village became a grog town, I felt like it would probably be a good idea to join a proper town instead. I said goodbye to my little abode, took what I could, and headed for the swamp next to the northern ocean. I wasn't quite sure where I wanted to go, but I heard of a quiet communist state in a corner of the map and decided I'd make my way there to see if I could join. The Foundations of Brasnikia is similar to the story of Snowball from the popular kids book Animal Farm. Two players founded this small nation, Ballistic Biscuit and Kushka. They originally had been part of the United Bergmarian Socialist Republic, or UBSR for short. The duo found the hardline extremist ideology of the Republic to not be a lot of fun, which makes sense figuring the UBSR is basically just a copy-paste of the USSR. Feeling ostracized for their more moderate beliefs, they decided to start their own nation. Ballistic bought land from the UBSR, a severely underdeveloped region of the map right against the world border. The rivers that flowed through here made it into an island of sorts. In a mega taiga, the land certainly wasn't ideal, but compared to the frozen tundras in the heartland of Sparwood, neither of them would complain. The town they founded was named Brasnikia, and the nation being called the People's Socialist Democratic Republic of Brasnikia, also known as the PSDRB. These communists need to get better at naming things. Kushka and Ballistic were the two supreme leaders, making up the executive branch, while the Senate, led by the head of Senate, made up the legislative branch. The Senate decided most things, but the leaders seemed tasked with implementing those changes. The senators were elected democratically during elections, they could vote on war declarations, joining alliances with other nations, declaring a national emergency, and stating new laws and stuff like that. There's a lot more to the government, I don't really have time for it in this video. There is a Wikipedia page for it, though. Squatters are almost always a problem in nations, but how the rulers go about it depends. Some nations let people run amok and do whatever they'd like, while others use brutal force to kick them out. However, there's a famous saying, if you can't beat them, join them. Small nations don't often have the resources to handle squatters, so why not accept them into your realm? It's usually a win-win situation. This was the case for a town called Brohaven, the north of Brasnikia. The mayor, Gunhands, and his second-in-command, OG Crafted, decided to join the PSDRB. However, this action would greatly aggravate the UBSR, who claimed the land was part of their territory. The small nation could not risk war over the town against a much stronger enemy, so Ballistic reluctantly gave the town to them, and for a few short hours, Brohaven was separated from Brasnikia. At least until someone looked at the map, and decided Braz clearly had Brohaven in their territory the entire time. And as time went on, the new nation and the Republic became quite bitter towards each other. But this was just one of the many geopolitical fiascos the PSDRB went into. The worst was yet to come. For several weeks, the confidence for the Supreme Leader started decreasing. The people were led by what was essentially a diarchy, but when Kushka stepped back from the spotlight and disappeared, Ballistic Biscuit sort of became an accidental totalitarian ruler with nearly complete control of the nation. This caused relations between Ballistic and the rest of the small country to quickly fall apart. On July 17th, a group of foreign diplomats spammed the Bresnikian Discord server while the Supreme Leader was offline. The Senate could do nothing to stop them. This was the straw that broke the camel's back, 
and soon after, the first revolt would start later that day. The revolutionaries, led by Sharko 121, OG Crafted, and Trash Wizard, took to the streets and demanded reform. The Supreme Leader thought that the UBSR and Vidoxia were behind the coup, but after that was later proven false, he believed the revolutionaries would declare war on the UBSR in an impossible to win fight, and pleaded to the Archduke of Frosmeyer for help in turn for becoming a protectorate to the large neighbor. With Frosmeyer troops storming into Bresnitschia, the people had no idea what was going on, and this did nothing but fuel the flames of resistance. Several days later, a newly unified revolutionary movement called the BRP formed, and planned to take control of the country by force. But due to logistical errors on all sides, the so-called battle for the Red Jewel was barely a battle at all, and after one player was banned and another killed over a goose chase involving a lost bed, the BRP gave up. Instead, they opted to use guerrilla tactics, causing even more confusion and misinformation, even involving a fake independence party. Before things got even more heated, the heir to the Archduke of Frosmeyer, Caleb, suddenly got involved and was able to broker a deal with the BRP leaders. And with the so-called Treaty of Aberdeen, the resistant movement was allowed to create a nation deep in Frosmeyer territory as an autonomous state. Peace was finally settled, and while technically a PSDRB victory, they lost a good chunk of their players, and as a dependent protectorate in Frosmeyer and later the Frosterium, it'd be heavily stunted and seemingly constantly knee-deep in politics. The core of the province eventually became Brauhaven as the town of Bresnikia fell into disrepair. I should mention that this period of history is extremely blurry. Nearly every site has their own bias, and I tried my best to keep things as neutral as I can. In my opinion, I don't really think anyone was really the villain, and just something that ended up happening. The story of this small nation was fraught with constant drama, and the Bloodless Revolution is a perfect example of the dangers misinformation and confusion could cause. The revolutionaries nearly started a war between Vidoxia and Frosmeyer. While all that really happened in the long run was making Frosmeyer more powerful, eventually annexing the UBSR and then merging with the Magisterium, forming the Frosterium. Viadoxa would merge with two other superpowers and form the Triumvirate of Denumane. And it's around this time I finally made it to Brohaven. Meeting with Faded Stars in a huge castle, he invited me to the town, showed me to a partially built house where I was able to settle down. On the next day, I spent a bit of time to explore the nation I was in. Currently, there were four towns. Raznikia, the old city. Brohaven, the largest town in the nation. Rydgrad, a fortress district. And Kirsten, which was a new port village technically in federal land owned by the Frosterium. Though, the area was currently being negotiated to be bought by the Bresnikian government. Right next to Brohaven was a bridge that led to Jamestown, an older town. Relations between the two seemed to have waned and waxed over the months but they were relatively nice to each other in the present day. Overall, this little section of the map was so secluded and quiet, I was surprised it stirred up so much drama in the past. I spent time learning more about the town's history, culture, and political system, and about a week later I realized I spent so much time exploring and meeting with people, I'd completely forgotten to finish my house. Oh well, I'm sure I'll get around to it eventually. You may be wondering, how is this country communist? Well. Um, you can build and break everywhere, I guess. People let you use their facilities. Oh, and apparently it's actually market socialist or something. Neither you or me knows what that means, so I'll just call everything I don't understand communism. The Senate elections were coming up, and this was about the time I decided the server would make for a fun video. Literally minutes before the voting started, I announced my campaign to run, with three main objectives. Number one, I'd make a video on Bresnikia. Number two, I'd help acquire the massive area of land for the country that would double its size. And number three, I'd finish my house. Now, of course, not all promises can be kept, and at the time of writing the script a week later, and at the time of recording three weeks later, I have yet to finish my house. The elections were sort of like ranked choice, each town got a number of senators based on population, and it was done with a list of applicants each time until no seats were left. Rohaven had three seats open and five players running. 
In the first round, Faded Stars was elected unanimously with 100% of the vote. In the second round, Admiral faced a bit more competition, but still won the vote with 66%. With just one more seat left against two other competitors, I had to do a little trolling. So I may or may not have offered to pay 25% of the new land acquisition on the spot, $100,000, and it allowed me to barely get into the Senate. You watching the video may think that potentially rigging a democratic vote is unethical, but we do what we must for YouTube content. Alongside Faded and Admiral, Robotic Author and Joe Shark were the two other senators from Rydgrad. The Minister of Defense, Error Panda, also got elected, but he didn't even apply and denied the offer to become a senator. And so as a complete stranger to Bresnikia and Rathnir as a whole, I basically had 20% say over the direction of the small province a week after joining. Now a politician in a block game, I had to figure out what to do next. And the first thing I realized was the cities were beautiful and land was plentiful, but the caves underneath had been almost completely strip mined away. And with few other ways to make money, it was one of the poorest states in the Frostarium. Attic promised to pay $100,000 though, so I needed to find a solution, and that solution was to do something not very communist of me. I took a trip to the other world in Stoneworks, Eltam. It was a custom generated map with fewer people as well as being a lot newer. All this really means is an opportunity to exploit foreign land. So I found a suitable location, asked the owner of the land if he mined it at all, and set up a mining outpost named Eisenkust and began bringing in tens of thousands of dollars immediately. Soon others wanted to join, and I expanded the call, I mean outpost. Ballistic was not exactly pleased about this when he found out, but it's technically owned by me, so I'm sure it's fine. Several days later, I'd already gotten the $100,000 for the land, but before I was able to pay that, something much larger was brewing. While Brasnikia was reforming and growing, the winds of change were sweeping through the rest of Eastern Rathnir. The Triumvirate of Denumane, a coalition between Vidoxa, Yimu Udal, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce this, made up the largest empire by land. But the nations were too different, and on the 16th of October, it collapsed. Yimu Udal and the Wide Country seemed to have come out unscathed. The Vidoxa faced rebellion, and Kartek, one of Denumane's vassals, fell into complete anarchy. This was not necessarily surprising. And I've even heard Denumane citizens celebrated the collapse. But several days later, the rest of Idoxa shattered two hours after the only player holding it together retired. People were beginning to freak out as old empires turned to dust. Then completely out of the blue, the Frostarium fell apart. Its Grand Magistrates grew tired of internal politics, dissolved the territory into states that were already there, as well as some completely new countries. The Magisterium and Frosmire, the two founding nations, retreated to their core territory. While many new nations were born, the important ones are the High Queendom of Paradise, Overisha, Tajneil, Yelheim, and what else? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah, the People's Socialist Democratic Republic of Brasnikia was once again its own sovereign nation, annexing Jamestown in the northwest frontier at the cost of going into a little bit of debt. The 22nd of every month would be celebrated as Brasnikian Independence Day, and excitement was in the air. But great challenges would soon face the small nation. And after a mysterious player named Fumbles555 started a strange squatter claim just outside of Brasnikia, the events afterwards would drastically change the towns, people, and country forever. Like the video, subscribe, and comment if you would like a part 2.